juicy topic today, seven dating mistakes wealthy people don't like about their dates. Now, this information is so important for anybody who really wonders constantly, I go on a successful, you know, I thought it was a successful date with a successful person and they never asked me out for that second date. What was it? What did I do? Well, today I'm going to tell you what might have happened because there are seven common mistakes I consistently hear and see that wealthy people don't like about a person they're dating. Now, a lot of them are very easy to fix and a lot of them you might think are so innocent. I, I had no idea that could be offensive to somebody and it is. So here we go. Dating mistake number one that a wealthy or successful person would not want to happen on a date, being told that you Googled them. I know, everybody Googles everybody nowadays, right? But there's actually something here about privacy. And if you, you know, it's often on dating apps or when you first meet someone, they maybe just introduce themselves as their first name or you only see their first name. And if you have admitted that you have done all the digging and you have gotten additional information that they did not tell you about them, then it feels invasive, it can feel invasive. A lot of very successful people are private people. They don't often have you know, social media accounts or sometimes even anything aside from LinkedIn and sometimes nothing at all. I'm talking about really high level, high net worth, very successful people. They're very private, generally speaking. So if you sit down on a date, even, you know, date number two, and you admit or say information about them that you know that they didn't tell you, that can feel very intrusive. So be careful, don't do it, don't admit you Google them. Dating mistake number two is being invited out to, let's say a dinner or a lunch, being invited out anywhere where you're dining and ordering the most expensive item on a menu. This is a big no-no, generally speaking, for any dating etiquette, but especially someone who is in a position of wealth or you know, you never want to be seen as taking advantage of the situation. So no matter how much you want that lobster on that menu or that steak, whatever it is, do not order it if it is the most expensive or on the more expensive side of the menu item price range. Now, this is the same for wine, champagne, anything like that. Now, if your host invites you, if this person says, you know, would you like a glass of champagne? Or they order one and say, would you like one? Or they order a bottle of champagne? Of course, enjoy it. But you should not be the person choosing the most expensive bottle, choosing the most expensive meal items. Now, your gender doesn't matter. Your gender doesn't matter. Their gender doesn't matter. But these are wealthy, successful people who don't want to be taken advantage of. And if they're wealthy and they're successful, they're probably intelligent. And they will figure it out if that's the only reason why you're there. And that you don't want to do. You never want to be dating someone just because of their wealth anyway. And especially if they think that, then you're probably not going to be invited on a second date. Now, the third thing that people commonly do that I hear all the time from my wealthy and successful clients is when you're out, so let's say you're at a bar, you're at a really nice cocktail bar, at a hotel, or at a party, a networking event, and you meet someone, and you think, you know, oh, what's an opening line? What should I ask them? What should we talk about? And you say, so, what do you do for a living? Now, you might think, of course, this is something I always ask that people ask me, but the reason why it's not the best question to ask somebody, especially somebody who is in a position of success and wealth, and especially if you already know that about them, is again, it comes across as opportunistic. It's almost like, how much can you give me? What can you do for me? What can I get from you? So if there's a really well-dressed person, let's say, super well-dressed person, you spot them, wow, they look amazing, look at their shoes, they are so well-dressed, I want to introduce myself to that person. The last thing I want to do is say, so what do you do? Because again, it's almost like, hmm, how much money do you have? Instant turnoff for anybody at a level of success, anybody at a level of really wealth. Because again, it's almost like you're after that and only that, which you never want to be the case. 
So stay away from this. I can't tell you how many of my wealthy clients, wealthy friends have said this. So be very careful. Anything else? Do you have any plans this weekend? You know, what did you do last weekend? What are your summer plans? Where's the best place you went over, you know, the winter break? Doesn't matter the time of year. There's always something else to talk about. And eventually it's going to come out what they do for a living. Now, if they ask you, oh, so what do you do for a living? Of course, it's fine to say, oh, and you? Um, but I would never be the person that asks that. The fourth thing to remember if you are dating someone in a position um, of, of really privilege, you want to make sure that you do not ask them to buy you something. Do not ever ask them to buy you a gift outwardly and say, oh, I would love that new handbag. I would love that pair of shoes. If you're out shopping, you're strolling down Fifth Avenue, you're in Harrods, wherever you are, I want you to own it that you want to buy something yourself. Even if it's something that, you know, down the road you wish would be gifted to you, you never want to say that to the person. Keep it in your head. Once they get to know you, once you've been dating for a long time, it's your birthday, it's your, you know, a holiday, maybe they'll gift it to you, maybe they'll give something to you, but you never want to be the person that asks for something, ever, ever, ever. It is just a massive turnoff for, for very wealthy people because it's again like you are using them. You're telling them how much to spend on you, when to spend on you, what to spend on you, and that should be up to them, not you. Again, it looks like you're taking advantage of the situation. So I had a friend who broke up with someone because he said, you know, there are multiple times where she would hint overly aggressively, mm, that would look really nice on me. Hey, did you check out that article I sent you? And it drove him crazy. And it was one of those things where sometimes successful people are attracted to other successful people and they don't want somebody who's going to be only dating them or using them for their wealth, for their privilege, for their success. Your success, your wealth, your personal wealth, your personal you know, privilege that you have built for yourself is attractive very often to the other person who has also built that for themselves. So I also want you, if you're watching this, to remember that you become more attractive the more successful you are to these successful people. Number five, this is a big one, and this might be something you have done before. You might have done in the past and thought, oh my goodness, maybe this is why I didn't get that second date, or they never called me back. And this is an important one to remember. Do not take photos of their property. Now this could be anything that they own. So it could be maybe they invite you to their home. And imagine they walk into their living room and you are filming their artwork or you're filming their house. Wow, this is so beautiful. <gasps> Again, that's really one of the biggest faux pas because you are, it's, it's really an invasion of privacy, especially if there are high price items in that household. The last thing they want is those to be on your next TikTok, your next reel, Instagram reel, whatever it is, it doesn't matter. That is what you want to avoid. So let's say you're driving in their car with them and you take out your phone. You're like, ooh, it's so showy. It's come, like it's almost like, look at me, look where I am. Ooh, look who I'm dating. Look who I'm at, how much money they have. Look how much money I might have. It's, you really, really don't wanna go there. Same thing, taking pictures of things like their watch, taking pictures of their nice shoes and posting it. If they did not give you permission, if they did not really, authorize that in any way if they didn't know about it especially you never want to post anything that shows their property so remember that keep your phones away on private you know private mode think about that and you don't want to be and it's also showy right who wants to be you don't want to be showy I, I feel like a lot of people who you know have wealth have success are modest people and modest wealthy people, modest successful people are, again, the most attractive people. The next point sort of rides on the last point, which is commenting, I would say over commenting on their nice things. So you can say, I love that piece of art that is so beautiful. What you should not say is, oh, is that a Picasso? You don't want to pretend like 
you are so impressed by their wealth. You don't want to make them also feel awkward about their wealth. You also don't want to ever, ever ask, oh, how much was that? The last thing you want to do, how much is that car? That is so nice. Oh, that watch, what did that put you back? These are, I'm cringing, I'm cringing just hearing myself say them. They're so bad. Do not make these same mistakes. And the last reason why that successful, wealthy person may not have invited you out for another day or extended your relationship or called you back is maybe you weren't grateful. And you might think, ah, what a letdown, but I cannot stress this enough. This is so important. People who share their life experiences, who come from a place of privilege, really appreciate gratitude. They appreciate when someone says thank you. That handwritten note, that extra email, that extra text saying how much you enjoyed the experience, the date, that they took the time and the thought to, you know, take you somewhere. That is what is most important. So be grateful. Don't be expectant ever. Um, you know, don't think that they're always going to pay for you every time. That's often not the case in modern etiquette. So I think it's a really, really wonderful, attractive thing always to offer to pay your own way offer to treat them back in as well. Don't always be so expectant because again, your success, as an entrepreneur, as a business or career person, as a social person, uh, really is also attractive. So don't forget those things. Now, next week is we are flipping the switch. This is another hot topic. So this week we talked about what might not be getting you that second date or that relationship of your dreams with a successful wealthy person. But next week, we are talking about the common mistakes that wealthy, successful people make. And I want you to be very, very in tune when I talk about these things. You might think, oh, my boyfriend or my girlfriend or this person I'm dating does this. Oh my gosh, is that what that means? So I'm going to kind of give you the behind the scenes look at the biggest mistakes that Again, I just, <laughs> that really, really separates somebody who has really elegance, sophistication, they're modest about their wealth and those that are braggish and therefore it's a very unattractive thing. And so what wealthy people do that they shouldn't while dating, I'm going to list those mistakes so you can recognize them. And if you're one of these people watching, so you don't make those mistakes. That's it for today. Thank you for joining. I'm Micah Meyer and I will see you next.